Well, welcome back, everyone, to the 59th episode of the Tundra Cast. We got Q. What's up? Rossi. Hello. And Siakam. It's good to be back. And, uh, yeah, it's the Stanley Cup playoffs are uh, two days away. And once again, like we did last year, we're going to go over our first round and our Stanley Cup finals predictions in this episode. And there's a lot of good matchups. Um, I, I feel like these are going to be... These playoffs are going to be so entertaining. There's a lot of good matchups in, in here. You know, you can get a, you know, especially in like rounds two and three, you can probably get some couple rivalries in there. It's going to be awesome. So let's, let's start at the East. Um, first matchup we have here is Florida and Washington. And, you know, the thing with me about Washington is that they're not a really good team. I really hate their goal teddy situation. I don't think Vanacek nor, um, Sam Sonov are capable of being a starter in the playoffs. And, I mean, just the depth surrounding that team. I mean, there's Ovechkin, there's Backstrom, there's Oshie, there's all those guys. But their bottom six is really weak. Their mm-hmm. defense really isn't the greatest. I mean, and Florida can just score at will. Like, they scored, like, eight goals, I think, like, t- like four times this season. It's it's absurd. Yeah, I agree with you. I think this is, like, uh, like the only – in the East, I think this is, like, the most lopsided matchup there is. I know. I mean, I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the one and only sweep mm. that we get mm-hmm. in this first round. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not saying it will happen. You know, Washington's got championship DNA still throughout their lineup with guys that won that cup um, a couple years back. Um, but experience can only do so much when you're so like when you're just not as good as the other team. Like that's what it comes down to, right? Um, and you know, obviously, we've seen in the past where teams that are not as good have beaten teams that are better. But I mean, not to this extent. I mean, yeah. you've got arguably the best team in hockey right now that's firing on all cylinders, and you've got a Washington team that's been shaky at best this right. entire season. Like, I can't think of a 10-game stretch where their team has looked like legitimate Stanley Cup contenders. I can't. Yeah. And their goaltending has a huge part to do with that. Yeah, and it's also um, obviously... Uh, go ahead, Rossi. Go ahead. Uh, I'll go with a drastically different opinion. Uh, I think because we all know how heavily focused uh, goaltending is in the playoffs, it all depends, in my opinion, on what form of Sergei Bobrovsky you get in the playoffs. Mm. So Yeah, that's my biggest question too. Yeah, while it could be a sweep where Washington just, you know, la- la- lays down and dies, if they if Bobrovsky isn't at his best and he's the Bobrovsky we saw last year, then this could just be an easy series for Washington. The thing well, here's is- the thing, yeah, like yeah, even if Bobrovsky's Ruff- Ruff- yeah. bad, then that means just both sides have bad goalies and then the rest is still in the favor of I still think Florida wins that matchup like 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 the way that I see it is that Bobrovsky at his ceiling we've seen at times this year is a guy who's arguably a top 10 goalie in the league still at his best as worst this season he's probably lower half of the league in terms of starting goalies right Mm -hmm. Vanacek and Samsonov for me this entire season has just been they've been fringe starters at best so even if Bobrovsky is not his best and he's letting in four goals a game, right? Then it comes down to which team can score more goals. And Florida, Florida. I think, leads the NHL this season in goals per game. So, you know, I just think that in terms of just firepower, right? You know, if there's one thing you don't want to do is get into a firefight with Florida, a team like Florida, because they've got four lines that can go, man. they got four lines that can score goals. Um, Washington's got maybe two. Maybe, Maybe, yeah. yeah. Uh, You know, Washington kind of reminds me of the Stars in, like, 2016 where they had Niemi and Lettinen and they didn't know who the hell was the starter. And, like, when one would have a bad game in the playoffs, they would go to the next one and, you know, Lettinen would have a good game. Next game, he crafts the bet. Like, I'm getting the same feeling here because Vanacek and Samsonov, you know, both have both been wildly inconsistent. For a while, Vanacek would be the starter, then he would have, like, two bad games in a row, and Sam Sonoff will steal the net, then he would start start to falter. And, like, you can't... You know, last year certainly wasn't the best, but he was up against Tampa Bay. You know, I, I think... And, you know, there's also the President's, President's Trophy, quote-unquote, curse with Florida right now. 
you know, I just I just can't see Washington winning the series unless Bobrovsky is like really bad and Washington somehow shuts down their offense, which I don't think is possible. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I mean, if Bobrovsky goes like full on 2021, 2022 Philip Grubauer, then like maybe. But that's if like so many things just have to go right for Washington. They have to be on offensively because like Bobrovsky can be bad but if Washington's not generating chances and they're getting hemmed in their own zone and outshot 40 to 15 even if Bobrovsky's save percentage is like 70 percent you like realistically you're only get you're only getting like three goals and four that can easily outscore that right so yeah. you gotta hope that you know the shots are at least even you gotta hope Bobrovsky is playing like terribly so you can get four or five goals in there. And then you gotta hope that Samson Samsonov or Vanchek, whoever the hell is gonna be in net for them that game, can step up to the plate and be at least as good as Bobrovsky, if not a little bit better. And then yeah, mm-hmm. you gotta mix all those factors yeah. in together. Also hope that the refs are calling a good game and you don't <laughs> they don't and Florida's power play doesn't get like 10 opportunities. Yeah, there's so many like all so many the variables against them for them to take a game for me. Um, so, Excuse phones going off. Sorry about uh, that. I, I just, I just, I, man, I want Washington to be to be good. I want I it to be too. a tight series because the last thing I want to do is, you know, assuming we'll talk about this series probably next. Assuming somehow that my Leafs get through the Lightning, the last thing I want is a fully rested Florida Panthers who came off a four zero sweep against Washington. Like, mm-hmm. you no, know, of course yeah. I want Washington to be good. It's I weird just, because I, I think Toronto would actually win that series against Florida, you know, I, like, I'm going to talk more about that in, like, when we get to Toronto and Tampa Bay, but, you know, you know, I'll, I'll just leave my comments for that series, but yeah, continue on. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, but, like, I got, I got Florida in four here. I just don't, like, I think Washington could maybe steal a game, but, like, I just think that this, this series is going to be over quickly. I just don't see Washington get, like, putting, get, get, like, putting up a real fight against the, the, the Panthers. Look, when when you have like guys like Carter Verhage and like those guys on the third line, you know you've got a good team. You've got a great team. Mason um, Marchman, right? Mason Marchman, like yeah. okay, Mason. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> like I, I know I'm gonna sound biased, but like Mason Marchman is a low key a product of the Panther system. I, I don't bet. think if you stick him on a random team, like if you put him on if you put, maybe Minnesota too, but if you put him on like I don't know, like Arizona. There's no way he's 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 you know putting up the numbers that he's putting up right. Up I don't know, right man. Now. Look at Travis Boyd. Yeah, like what, oh, 40 points? You know what? Danny Mulligan has a lot of potential. This okay? is going he can from still like, be a, yeah. he can, from like an he hour still podcast to like player. a five-hour podcast. Yeah, let's not talk about this. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. we're gonna go on a tangent. Okay. It's gonna be like All five right. hours of you guys talking about <laughs> failed prospects. <laughs> no, All right, we're right. We're them. Well, okay, different. okay. Well, what's so? What's everyone's prediction? I got Florida in four here. Florida in five. I'm just gonna say they get lucky once. I got Florida. Yeah, in five. I'd say Florida. Yeah, I got Florida in five. Like, right. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a sweep, but yeah. I think I think Washington will gut out one. Yeah, okay. no, we all know that Ovi's that Ovi will at least win them one game if at the very oh, yeah. least. Okay, so quick question before we go to the next series. You're Peter Laviolette. Who do you go with to start? I think you start with Samsonov. I, I go, don't. I go Vanacek. That's the thing, right? That's the thing. <laughs> Who do you start? That's the issue. I go uh, Vanacek. They... It's easy. It, in my opinion, it's a bit easier. Vanacek, while he was inconsistent, he he did have the better stats over the season. So I go with him. But I, I talked to a lot of cat fans, and they say when Samsonov is – is at his best. He's yeah. better. He's so much better than Vanacek. So, like, I don't know who you go for. But Vanacek's floor this year was always higher. And so, you don't yeah. want to take that opportunity that you're going to get someone at their best. You want to just think about their bare minimum. And so, if you're going with the bare minimum product production, you go with Vanacek. That's right. where I'm going to go against you on that one. Because I think the Caps need everything to go perfectly for them to win the Stanley Cup this year. Or even go past the first round this year. So... I think they're gonna rely on Samsonov being at his absolute best, and that yeah, means that they get the My point is, is you can't just be like, "Oh, we're hoping that he's gonna play out of his mind." No, you gotta be like, "Who's the safer option?" Especially in a series against Florida, who can score like fifty goals on you if you're not careful. Uh, I think what it comes down to me is not really which goalie is better. 
I think it comes down to like, and this is gonna, Laviolette's going to have the best sense of this. It's going to be which goalie does the team in front of him have the most confidence in when they step on the ice, mm, right? Yeah. You see the Toronto Maple Leafs the past couple of seasons, they play completely different when Jack Campbell or when Freddie Anderson was still here. When those guys were not the starters, the team looked completely different. We went from yeah. a team that looked like they could be Stanley Cup contenders to a team that lost like 7-1 to pittsburgh's ahl team it's the right? it's, like, it's the same thing here in edmonton like i know there's a difference to play when mike smith isn't that compared to michael koskin it's just so absurd and I, I i don't i don't know why teams do that like i get like okay if you have like a michael hutcherson in that obviously you're going to try to be a bit more careful you're going to be a, a bit more conservative conservative when you know if jack campbell isn't playing but like I, I don't know i think you should always have faith in your goaltending and like if i'm the caps like like, I don't know, like, like you say, I don't know who, who I play. I, and, you know, like, you can make an argument for both. Um, that's, that's I mean, that's going to be a story to enter the offseason, too, right? You know, if Washington is an early exit, do they go out and try to get a guy like Ville Husso? You know, who's going to be a free agent? Do they try to go after Kemper, Colorado, you know, is an early exit, too? You know, goaltending is huge in the playoffs. And yep. a lot, and there's a lot of teams in the league, especially in the playoffs, that have these goalie issues. So it's going to be, it's interesting to see. Yep. Oh, All for right. sure, for sure. All right, Toronto, Tampa Bay. Um. Okay, first off, this is probably going to be the best series. Like. In oh the yeah. For sure. For sure. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. It's going to be um, awesome. I'm excited for it. I'm. Also, not excited for it at yeah, all. Yeah, you're scared, eh? Yeah, I'm, I am. I am. I am terrified. I'm gonna give a brutally am... honest opinion. I don't think you guys are gonna like it. Sweep. I'm not. I'm not saying a sweep, but I'm gonna be honest. I don't trust Jack Campbell at all. And I don't either, to be honest. I don't no, trust him. Don't not either. after. Not after that collapse that he started in what February, I think. Where him and Bro, to be fair, he was also injured. basically basically post All Star break. Yeah, post All Star um, break, him and Mrazek had the worst save percentage in the entire NHL. So I don't trust Campbell. Uh, I'm, let's let's say screw it. The Leafs don't have a history of being uh, terrible in the playoffs. I don't trust Campbell enough, and you're going up against the Tampa Bay Lightning, who still have Vasilevsky. So I'd say Tampa in six. Yeah, I got Tampa in six two. What are you and, saying, Q? I I'm not even gonna comment. I'm just gonna stay quiet on this one. Ah uh, man. Well, that's, no, I'm... you don't just stay quiet. That's that defeats the whole purpose of what we're doing. I don't you gotta care, pick Russ. Q. You got you gotta pick oh, Q. You gotta God. pick, man. Come on. I know it's gonna hurt. Oh wait, unless I'm just I'm receiving word from the NHL. Unless you uh make your prediction right now, uh, David Ayers is gonna start for Tampa. Oh, a Q, come on. Come on. <laughs> it's one thing to lose to Vassy. It's one thing to lose to Vassy. If, if Ayers wins the cup uh, as a starting goalie, like, we're never going to lose Ayers is doing it, boys. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say Tampa and seven. It's going to be really close, but. Man. Game seven. Call, call, call me a cynic. I got, I got. I got Tampa. I got Tampa in five. I don't think it's convincing. Really? I think Holy it's convincing. I think. I, look. Like, I, and this is where I need to explain myself before, like, Leafs fans yeah. just start jumping on me and calling me, like, a fake fan or a hater. Like, I'll be realistic. Like, do I think that Toronto could make an Eastern Conference Finals in the Eastern Conference in, like, a normal year? Yes, right? If, if it was just, like, a one-to-eight setup, I think Toronto is legitimately a, a, the third best team in the conference. And I think that they could beat who I see as the best team in the conference, which is Florida. But I, but there's one, te- there, there's one team in this, in, in, from one to eight of, of playoff teams in the East. There's one team I do not want to play that I do not think Toronto matches up well against, and that is Tampa Bay. That is like yeah. like last year, the one team that I was terrified of in the North was Montreal. Montreal. Yeah. The year before that. The what like when I found out we were playing Columbus, I had a bad feeling. I like I I knew it was gonna be a close series. I had a weird feeling we were gonna lose. I had that same feeling last year with Montreal. The way they play, the thing with Tampa is they score lots of goals. They got lots of talent, but what it comes down to is, as Rossi said, I don't trust Jack Campbell like at all. Yes, he was hurt, and yes, he's played better 
um, at, when he came back from injury. But there hasn't been enough of a sample size for me to have that much confidence in him. Um, the Leafs aren't as susceptible this year in terms of injuries completely derailing their season. But Bunting's got to come back from injury. We don't know how well he's healed from that. We And realistically... Bunting has been on that line with Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews for so long in this season. If he doesn't come back 100%, much like how Nick Flano and Zach Hyman were not 100% last year against Montreal, if that line can't get going, this team has no chance, yeah. right? Like, like, And that's what I'm concerned of. If, if we have to stick someone else on that line and we don't know if that line is going to work and they have to get their chemistry together over a seven-game series against one of the second-best team in the East – like that's a very high, you know, ask for them, right? And then not to mention to move that guy up, you're messing with the other lines, right? Like we saw Keith put Mikheyev, Engvall, and Camp back together in the second last game of the season, right? Pro Ray Farrell said it on on live, right? Like that's maybe a line for the playoffs. Realistically, Soup's gonna move into the top six if Bunting can't play. Mm -hmm. um and that that screws up the entire dynamic jake muzzin we've seen in a handful of games since the all-star break we don't know if he's going to be ready to go if he's 100 percent. jack campbell's injury if he gets hurt again i don't know what's going to happen there's so many question marks on this team and like <clears throat> do i think that toronto could even win this series sure i mean when you have austin matthews mitch martin john torres william nylander on your team anything is possible but Tampa Bay's got championship DNA. Their top six matches as well against matches well against any top six in the entire NHL. They went at the trade deadline and got one of the best third lines in hockey. And the way they've been playing together with um, what was it? Uh, Hagel, Nick Paul, and uh, the guy who's been there. Uh, I forget his name. He's really good. Um, I'm just gonna say this right now. Nick Paul has 14 points in 20 games. He's just been an absolute fit there, man. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And their defense, like, they've got good defense, too. And if that wasn't enough, they have an all-world goalie. We talk about the last couple of playoff runs that Toronto has, right? Who have we played? We've played past his prime Carey Price. We've played Elvis Merz-Lincolns. Corpus we've played Corp And Corpus Allo. We've played um, – I don't even remember who Washington's goalie was. Uh, was it still Holtby? But that was, like, Holtby, past yeah. his prime Holtby. <clears throat> and then we played Tugrath, who admittedly, very good goalie, right? What what is what every Leafs fan said after each of those series? Man, we couldn't we just couldn't buy a goal. Man, we just got goalie consistently from games five to seven, right? When we lost those series. You think we're not gonna get goalied against Andre Vasilevsky? If if we can't consistently find goals as a team against players like Carey Price, like how can I be expected to have the confidence that they're gonna be able to do that consistently against what is consensusly the best goaltender in the NHL. I I don't buy it. I, yeah. I think Tampa's I, I think I think th like I said, this could be a Leafs win. And I hope to God it is. But I'm not optimistic, man. Like I, I can't be. I can't be. Last year I picked Toronto to make it to the the final four. Um even with my gut telling me they were gonna lose in six or seven. And guess what? My gut was right. I gotta stop thinking with my heart, man. I, I yeah. want I want this win so bad, but uh, I don't think it's going to be close. You have to join hey. me. Just be a cynical asshole who just always thinks the worst of their team. <laughs> yeah. And, and until they prove to me otherwise, like, like obviously I know that last game we didn't have Matthews, but, man, that was a beatdown. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure Matthews even I – don't, I don't think even Matthews would have made a difference. And I think that's more of what we're going to see in the playoffs. Uh, I, I think Tampa Bay has another gear that they can go to I don't think Toronto has another gear, um, and that's the issue. Like that's what happens when you have a team that goes to on deep playoff runs every year. You know, in the regular season, you know Toronto had that really big win, right? But what what happened that last matchup? Tampa Bay turned it up a notch. You know, the level of physicality went up a notch, and in those kinds of games, I don't think Toronto's skill. I don't think they can outskill Tampa because yeah. Tampa is skilled too, and they're willing to work harder, yeah. and they have the better goalie. Yes. Just nothing about Vasilevsky, just to remind you, he has five straight series clinching shutouts. Yeah. It's like every time the series is about to end, he gets a shutout in that game. Like, yeah, and, he's... and the main thing is, is not only does it do the playoffs come down to goaltending, but the whole dynamic of the NHL changes during the playoffs. It's no longer a speed game, really. It is physicality. Yes. And just playing solid defense and everything. And I don't think that Toronto can even get close to how physical Tampa can get. 
That's what I'm saying, man. Like, I want to believe it. Corey, was this when did Corey Perry? Uh, he has 40 points. <laughs> and he's 36, like a fourth liner. 36 year old Corey Perry. <laughs> And he's a fourth line. Like I'm telling you, I'm. T- I don't think it's close. I, I, re- I really don't. I, I think. I think Toronto matches up against Florida well because yeah, I, yeah. Florida doesn't have a great goalie, and their defense isn't great. Like if you look at the goals for and goals against per game, Toronto and Florida are very comparable, right? Like if I th- if, if Florida and Toronto play each other, I think it's a seven game series where all the games. Like if you had to bet an over and under. In terms of total goals in a game, I bet over eight every single time because I think it's just going to be a high event scoring fest, right? By the way, to Tampa, all of Tampa years, can shut it down, man. What Tampa is doing right now is years of pain, just wanting hope. Tampa, Tampa can shut it down, man. Like, I, like that's why I was praying for Boston. I was, I was like, guys, like, like Tampa, Tampa, please lose, and can we please sell against Boston the last game of the season, please? It didn't happen. In Boston, I have no hope. I have no hope. You know, like he, like I was, I was like I was about to mention this in the last series, but like I feel like whoever wins this Tampa Toronto series is going to the Cup Finals. Yeah, I'm gonna say that. Like, I, I, Tampa's the team, I'm, the only team I'm honestly worried about. Like, if it's not, if it's if they Leafs beat Tampa, then there's no one else they're losing to. That's that's you're, what you're, I'm saying. You're going to the finals. That's what I think. Exactly. Yeah, I will say that if we can yeah. beat Tampa, there's no team that can that that can that can stop us. I'm like, gonna say it. And, and I'm gonna say this say this exact same thing when we get to the West series. You're just gonna have to wait about that. But yeah, I got I got Tampa in six here. Um, you know, just just you know, like I maybe Matthews, Marner, those guys go off. I mean, maybe not Marner, he does have like a goal in like five playoff years or whatever. But like, you know, JT Nylander has always been a great playoff performer. Matthews, those guys gotta carry you. Maybe they do, but you know the, the game is just so much tighter in the playoffs. Tampa has that experience; they got they got no holes in your lineup. It, yeah, I, I got Tampa in six here. I'm sticking to five. I'm sticking to five. Call, call me a cynic. I don't I care. Still I'm sticking got to Tampa five. And six. And then you got Tampa in seven. All right, next series. Here's one that I feel I feel like this is gonna be another good series, and uh, I kind of got an upset here. So we got Carolina and Boston. And now the biggest thing for Carolina is that Frederick Anderson will be healthy for the start of the playoff run. And that's crucial because I don't know if he can rely on a lot on anti Ranta. And also, like, I feel like their defense is a lot weaker this year. Like, I mean, Jacob Slavin's still Jacob Slavin. He's amazing. Um, he should get way – he should get Norris votes, honestly. The suit's insane. Brett Pesci's still good. But, like, besides that, like, I mean, Tony D'Angelo, I mean, he's more like a power play guy, you know – Ian Cole is a good third pair guy. Brady Shea really isn't that good. I feel like a lot of people are overrated McCain's because of uh, because of their season, and they're not they're not gonna be they're gonna be without their starter. And I mean, Boston has a pretty good solid team all around. Maybe not in their bottom six, but they got a lethal top six. Their defense is very underrated, especially since they added added Lindholm. And I like Swayman and Olmark as a start uh, as a tandem. You can put either one of them to start the series, and they'll get the job done. And you know, I just feel like the like this is one of these this is one of those series that we're gonna see an upset here, and I got, I'm gonna go with Boston six here. I think I just think the perfection line is just gonna tear up that tear up Carolina. I don't think they're gonna meet expectations, and uh, yeah, the goal the goal is just the biggest question mark for me there. Yeah, I I actually 100 percent agree. I have Boston actually in seven, but I don't think I could add anything to what you said. I think that what you said is perfect. Canes fans aren't gonna like me very much. I can tell you this much. <laughs> Canes fans are you don't like me from last year. Um, I got a sweep <laughs> for Boston. Whoa, whoa, I got, I got, I got a sweep for Boston. Oh shit! Jesus, look, cool. Ryan's look, putting look. his fucking nuts on the table. I, I think, I think that Carolina's defense, like when their general manager made those two moves in the off season that we questioned. When they let Dougie Hamilton go because they didn't want to pay him, and they replaced him with Tony D'Angelo, and then they let Nedeljkovic go for a bag of peanuts so they could go sign Anti Ranta and Freddie Anderson, we said at the time both of those goalies that they signed, durability issues. Yeah. Right. We said that at the time, and guess what? And we said Freddie Anderson usually falls apart at this time of the year if you overwork him. He fell apart. He's hurt. Like like you can't say we didn't try to warn you. You know, 
D'Angelo has been productive on the power play, but he is not the two-way Norris level defenseman that Dougie Hamilton is. And I know ownership is cheap and you save money. Nah, right? Then you look at the construct of playoff hockey, right? The Boston Bruins roster is built for playoff hockey. Mm -hmm. They got two lines that can score, but all, both of those lines can bring out a physical edge. That bottom six doesn't allow goals against. You know, you can talk to Chris or Alex guy. Boston's bottom six does not give up goals. They yeah. might not score many goals, but they are not giving up goals. And you look at that defense, that defense quietly top five in the, in, in the entire league. Just in terms of keeping the puck out of their net. They're all physical. They got a couple of puck movers in there. McAvoy can carry that unit offensively. Carlo is incredible. Grizzly is a great two-way defenseman. Hampus Lindholm just solidifies that top four. That's a great defense, right? That's yeah. not a team you want to play in the playoffs. Because like, like Tampa, Boston has another level that they can bring their game to. And when you look at Carolina, they got a lot of finesse guys on their team, man. They got they got a lot of finesse guys. Like, like you know, Aho is not really a gritty player. Svechnikov is a guy who tries, but he just gets beat up by Alexander Ovechkin. Right? <laughs> like he's not, you know, Niederreier is not really a tough. Like Jordan Stahl is their tough guy. I don't even know if Martin is, but like it says Jarvis is probably going to be on their playoff roster. He's a rookie. He's not going to fight anybody. He's not going to hit anybody, right? He's you know like he's going to get and like these guys are going to get bullied. And I I just don't see someone on that team. When Boston is starting to run away, because you know, you know, when you go into TD Garden in the playoff game, the refs swallow their whistles. Q can yeah. attest to this. Like, like as Leafs fans, we've been on the receiving end of that for how many playoff runs now? You, you go to TD, even when you're not in TD Garden, when you're at home, the refs, oh, that's not a hit from behind anymore. Oh, that's not a hook. Play, be stronger on the puck. Oh, that's not a slash. That's where where are these the calls playoffs. that you want? Yeah, like, like they don't, playoffs, but, the, the refs just like throw their whistles away. Yeah, but even but more in so TD for Garden, Boston, and like it's crazy. Yeah, because Boston, yeah, I think, cause Boston yeah. gets away with murder sometimes. Yeah, um, I think the problem like, like, with with most refs now is it it's now to the point where they don't want to be at the thing. Like the refs cost the game, so they just kind of just throw their whistles away and they don't want to do anything. And, like, Boston is just the best team in the NHL, like, getting away with that kind of stuff. And we've seen, like, I've seen in the past in the regular season games where, you know, when you get physical with Sebastian Ajo, you can kind of get him out of his company. Like, he he, he's, he doesn't look quite the same. If you can get in his head and you and you can mess around with him a little bit, like, something, like, that could be. And I think what it comes down to is I don't think Freddie Anderson is going to come back for the first round. I don't, yeah. And I think I think there's a good chance anti Ranta is going to get hurt. I, I like that's what it comes down to. I, I, I think in one of these first two games, there's going to be a play. A Bruins going to the net. Brad Marchand's digging for the puck or he's racing in. Makes contact with the goalie. Makes I, contact with the goalie. He pulls his hamstring. After that, Carolina doesn't get, like, they can't win. Like, their defense is not good enough to it, cover for a third string goalie. And unless, like, Coach Chakov, and who, who who does have a lot of potential, don't get me wrong, he's still young, he's probably going to be their future starter. But, like, unless he can pull Nadelkovic from last season, I, I just, yeah, like, once again, I don't see them making it that far. And, um, yeah, I mean, you just, you nailed it on the head. Like, I just, the Bruins are going to absolutely bully them. It's, that's why I got them in six games. Like, I think Carolina's skill, speed, will, will steal them a game or two, but... Yeah, I just I just think the Bruins are gonna win this in six. I I don't think it's that close. It, it, it's just that because Carolina won their division and because historically in the playoffs, the last like one or two years, they've done well defensively. Like like I, people have to realize for me is that this is not the same Carolina team that was in the playoffs last year. You know, yeah, they just, lost big, big pieces to that success, right? Like they're not a, a two way team anymore. And the same way that they used to be. And even so, and like, that's last I, year they didn't have that strong of a showing in round one against Nashville. And you exactly, and you, right? and you spoke about grit, right? And you know this kind of goes back to I don't want to bring up this trade because it's gonna make me seem like a homer. It kind of goes back to the Bear Fogle trade, you know? Like, listen, I love Ethan Bear from my heart, and he's been getting some unfair treatment in Carolina. Let me just say that right now. But Bear's not that guy who's gonna bring the greatness in the playoffs, right? He's only five ten. You know, he, he doesn't weigh a lot. Like, he, he's not going to throw his body around. That's what Fogel's going to do. 
you know, if Fogel's not scoring, at least he's going to throw around a body check. At least he's going to get in front of the net and make, you know, the opponent's lives a living hell. You know, and I think they're going to really miss Fogel in that asset. And, you know, if if the Oilers somehow make it far, I don't I don't think they make it past the second round. Let me just tell you that right now. Um, you know, it's I think that's I think that's the piece that they're going to miss, honestly. And I, I, I get it. Bears a good third pair. I mean, he's a good, he's a great young right hand defense, but he's cause control. But you, you do need that hard hitting grit in the playoffs. And I, like you said, Carolina just doesn't have it at all. Like I think Boston's going to come into Carolina, punch Carolina in the mouth for the first two games, and just absolutely. And and Carolina's got to figure out how to get back in the game. Right? You lose the first two games of the series, like you got to readjust. You got you know you have to adjust your level of play, your level of intensity, your 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 level of fight. Right? Like you got to use get used to the fact that what used to be a penalty in the regular season isn't a penalty right now. And Boston's going to because you know Boston's going to bring the intensity game one and. The issue is you fall down 0-2 and you're the home team and now you got to go to TD Garden and try to find a way to win one of those two games. Man, right. that's tough. That's, that's tough, right? Realistically, I think Carolina will probably – you guys are probably right. Carolina will win one or two. But I think there's a really good chance that Boston just shocks everyone because I like Swayman a lot. I like Swayman a lot. I, like I, like you, you talk about you know either one of them could start. I think Swayman is the starter. Um, yeah, and I think he's going to be really good. So, you know, there's you have a defense that can counteract um, Carolina's skill and offense and speed, and you have a level of physicality and edge that you can bring to the table that Carolina just doesn't have on their roster. Um, and so, if you can, if Boston can land a punch early, like if if Boston wins the first two games in Carolina, it's a sweep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. The only way Carolina is making this series longer than four games is if they win at home. Win one game at home. Which yeah. Is so, home. Every, so what was everybody's predictions before we go? I to, said uh, Bruins and six. Bruins and six. Would you say you said Bruins and four? Four. Uh, seven. So what do you think? Four seven. And seven. I said six or seven. I don't remember. Yeah, hey, at least we all agree on this. I, I actually, I, I, I expected something like go of Carolina. I, awesome. I'm, I'm just trying to move it along because. Obviously, Ryan. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Yeah. Ryan's going in depth and stuff, and we all want to go in depth, but we also obviously don't have a lot. Yeah, obviously, you and I are going to be able to go a lot more in depth than the West. Then yeah, then we can go in the East. So I'm. Yeah. I need to go get a drink of water. So I'm going to do my thing on New York, uh, Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh, real oh, quick. Yeah. Uh, it's the battle of the two biggest frauds in the playoffs. <laughs> uh, let's be real. These were the two teams that uh, really got the biggest advantage from the we from the West. The East being utterly abysmal this year. It, the East was a joke this year. Very top-heavy, in my opinion. Obviously, I'm not trying to say that the teams in the playoffs aren't good. These two teams are the biggest frauds, though, in my opinion. This I is... don't think the Penguins are that big of a fraud. Yeah. I, 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 okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go more in-depth when so I get So, my opinion in this is it's going to just be on goaltending. A uh, better goaltender is Shosturkin. It's going to be the Rangers in four. And I'm going to go get a drink of water. Please. Um. Okay. I guess I'll go first. I got. I. Uh, I'm. I'm just gonna say this right now. I. Um. I. You guys. I'm gonna get so much heat for this, but this is my hot take at the playoffs. I got the Pens going to the third round. I. I got Pens in seven here, and you know, the last few years have been really disappointing for the Penguins. Right. 2019, they got swept. 2020, they didn't make the playoffs. I don't hear what people say, Pens fans. You didn't make the playoffs in 2020. And in 2021, you got embarrassed in six games by the Islanders because Tristan Jari couldn't save anything at all. Um, this is probably the last chance for Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, and Chris Letang to really go after one last Stanley Cup. And I think Crosby's going to make sure he can get his team as far as they can. Their depth is pretty good, actually. I mean, Jeff Carter, as their third line center, 45 points. Lee's legend, Evan Rodriguez, 43 points. Evgeny Malkin. Having one of his best years in, in quite some time. He a bit over point per game. Um, Kaspari Kapanen fell off at the end of the season, but I mean, still, still a thirty point score. Mike Matheson has re, re, re resurrected his career, you know, and you know Tristan Jari had looked really good during the regular season, and you know the Rangers just the Rangers can't play five v five at all. That's the thing. They're they're a team with a hot power play and a great goalie. I made these made this comparison a lot of times this year. They're like last year's Oilers. They can't play five v five at all. 
their power play and PK carries them through games, and their goaltender has to make the big save. And honestly, I don't like the outlook of the Rangers roster at all. Um, I mean, besides besides Adam Fox, her defense is just kind of eh. You know, um, they got a lot of grit in the lineup, but like, you know, you need a balance of grit and skill. And I mean, you know, I just I just don't like the outlook of this team. And you know. And I think Shesterkin is – is I mean, he's getting burnt out at this point, right? You don't want to play your goaltender too many games. You know, if if Shesterkin ends up getting hurt, you're going to have to put Georgiev in the net. And I mean, it's just, it's just not a good matchup. And I think Shesterkin is going to have to really carry them through the seven-game series. And, you know, another thing is that the Rangers are still a relatively young team. You know, Kako, Lafreniere, you know, Neil Lundqvist. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I couldn't. I, I'm sorry. I just. It's so I, funny. I think it's funny that the two young guys you pointed out are, why? are pretty bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, it's... I mean, okay. Like, okay, let's not get a twist, okay? Like, Kako and Lafreniere are still, like, good great. players. They're like, 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 Kako is an elite defensive forward. It's just that. They're not. They're not playing like a, a former number one and number two overall pick. So like, I, like I, it's, it is kind of funny. But like, these are still middle six players. Like, they're still good players. Like, last year's on pace for what? Like, what 40, 50 points this year? Like, he's not a bad player. He's just, you know, he's just not number one overall pick worthy. Like, he's not like that franchise level player that we thought he was coming out of the draft. Right. You know? Basically, I just think that Crosby and those guys are gonna try to go for one last cup, and they take over the Rangers in seven. And I think I'm going to agree with you because uh, not uh, seven, I'm going to say six because I don't think like, as good as Shesterkin is and he has been this year, uh, Crosby has been really, really good. He has an, uh, he's been, it's crazy to say this, but he's been having an underrated season. Yeah. I think. And um, everyone else on that team too. And I'm going to come out and say it now. Gensel is good. No! 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 Never! No. Never! 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 never, never. 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 No! No! You will never admit uh, that. Jeff Sucker's better. There, let's just... Jake Gensel <laughs> can win the heart, the rocket, the 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 Vesna, the like every single award that an NHL player can win in one season. And I will still not admit that Jake Gensel is a good player. I, I refuse to do it. He's not good. Sucker's better. Yeah, okay. Fair facts. But um. He- yeah, I think yeah, yeah, um, Pittsburgh's got like way too many weapons, and I think they've been. And I think honestly, this team is also one that's at their playoff caliber with the way that um, their stars, especially, have you know, they're they won back to back for a reason. So, I think, <clears throat> and I, I think that this team, they, and I'm gonna agree with say it's they're gonna take it all the way to this, uh, Eastern Conference Finals and. Uh, they're going to play against either Toronto or uh, Tampa Bay, and that's yeah. where they're going to run into problems. But um, I think until then, I think that's a good team right there. I, I um, uh, my one thing is that we're not considering is we got to know what the, the, the situation around Tristan Jari's health is. I think he's going to play. That's what I've been hearing. Yes, I, I heard, heard that yeah. too, yes. Um, but like the, the big thing is if, if Tristan Jari – is not 100 percent or like he's just rushing back to get in the playoffs because it's it's been what how many how many how many days since he's last played a game two weeks it like it's it's been a bit right like you know um and if he comes back and he's not 100 percent um i can i can i can see this being you know a six game series for new york where they get momentum early on and kind of deflate Pittsburgh and then Pittsburgh kind of has to play catch up the rest of the series um, because they got to get, they got to play Jari back into shape basically. Um, but if Jari comes in and, and he's good game one, like this was still, I think this could still be like a six, seven game series, but I, I think Pittsburgh would win it because yeah. of all the reasons that you mentioned. So this is a series that could go either way, but it really hinges on how Tristan Jari plays. Because even if he is healthy, we've seen in past playoff runs, you know, Jari couldn't make a save to, to save his team when, when they needed him to. Um, so he's an X factor. So right now I tentatively have pens and seven, but it could, it could easily be Rangers and, 
five, six, or seven, you know, depending on how Jari plays. Right. Yep. Um, that's, all, that's, cause, what cause, was, that's, all, that's what I was going to say, too, because, yeah, I mean, I think people are so down on the Penguins after how the last three years are going that they're kind of underrating them now, especially with Tristan Jari, who's actually had a good year. Um, you know, but yeah, like like you said, Jerry isn't healthy day one, and he's he's slow to get to standard. Uh, yeah, the Rangers are gonna take the series for sure. It's close. It's a close series. It, it's gonna it's gonna be a good series too. Don't get me wrong. It's gonna be a fun series to watch. I can't wait. Yeah, because because you know Shesterkin's gonna at least steal one game that Pittsburgh should win. Yeah, just because of how good he is, right? Which is why I think the margin's very thin. If Yari can steal a game back, I think Pittsburgh wins the series. But if he's not good enough to do that. Like that, that, that one game might make the difference where Pittsburgh's out shooting New York like 40 to 25 and five on five, New York can't get anything going. And it's the playoffs and they're not getting penalty calls and they can't score a goal. And then Shesterkin just carries them on the back and in overtime, you know, Kreider or Panarin with more space gets, gets a lucky one. Yeah. Like, like that could be a complete momentum shifter at, in, in a series. So it's up to Yari. Just like Jari is the X factor. Yeah. Uh, if he if he's if he can match his Durkin or at least be somewhat close, I think it's pens and seven. Yeah. I well I just said that Rangers and four mainly because I do not really think much of the Penguins and also I wanted there to at least be one sweep in my bracket. Okay. <laughs> um next. My second sweep. Sorry, Rossi. Um I mean abs- don't say I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. As and praise. Right. If this was Soros, right. okay, okay, okay. Let me see. If Soros was playing day one, I think Nashville would have a chance to upset the Abs. I think it would have may, may, might have been a six game series, but you, I do not trust no save Dave. Okay, he sucks. <laughs> right. This this will be the one. This will be the series that I go most in depth on since it's the one I know most about. Okay, I'll now, let you take, I'll take the lead. <clears throat> uh. Obviously, I'm going to say a few things about uh, the last few games of the Preds season. It kind of has to do with the second game against Calgary where Saros got hurt. Now, I'm not going to point out the obvious uh, dirty moves that Lucic and Kachuk and many more were doing on Preds players, mainly trying to hurt them, and it was pretty evident. Uh, But for some reason, the refs never called. Now, the Saros injury... It's a high ankle injury. He's going to be out four to six weeks. Um, I hope he doesn't do this, but he could be exactly like his mentor, who is Pekka Rene, and just come back early when he shouldn't. Um, with Saros, I think that this would have been a lot closer of a series than I think it is now. I mean, obviously, the Predators won their, their season matchup this year. Um, you know, the Predators are very built for the playoffs, as, as we know. They... They're physical. They take a lot of penalties that wouldn't get called in the playoffs. You know, they're a team that can just just punch goals in. You know, you have Janot and, and everybody. And, you know, even the main guys who you think are just, just skill guys, they can fight. Like, Forsberg and Duchesne aren't afraid to just get up in someone's face. And, obviously, the it's not like last year with the Predators going against the Canes where the Predators were hurt and they were missing uh, Favreau... Ellis or no no Ellis or it was I it was Ellis and then Arvidsson, you know they're not missing all these guys they're just missing Saros. Now without Saros, this is scary for the Predators. Uh, mm. The Predators would need to bat, patten down and protect the net, and obviously with Riddick in the last game that. We played against each other uh, between Riddick and Kemper. Riddick let in a lot of bad goals, but you know when when the Predators needed him to make saves, he made the saves. But again, it's playoff time, and I trust the Predators' defense, especially with Lazan coming back in for Benning. I trust the Predators' defense to shut it down. But I don't know how much they can shut it down against Colorado. I have Colorado in six. Six? Wow. I had I had Nashville losing in six last year. I was right. I'm going for them losing in six again. Nicole, I don't know. I just don't trust Riddick, man. Like, if it was Soros, then yeah, I probably have Colorado in oh. six. But still, like I trust. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. 
I don't trust Riddick, but I trust our defense too. Okay. I don't know, man. I I, I don't I think know. it's close without Soros in there. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to be honest, Rossi. I actually had Nashville in seven with Soros. Like, oh. like I like that was like that was gonna be like my upset upset pick of the playoffs, um. But obviously, you know, he's out and he's. I don't think he's coming back. Um, but I I, I still like that natural roster. I think they play the right way. I think they're built for playoff hockey. So I'm gonna agree with Ross here. Actually, I think it's still a five six game series. I don't think they get swept. I I just like they're not like a Carolina built team where like they're soft or like a trial that like can just like roll over when the things get when things get tough. I think this national group has a lot of fight in them. I think they're going to fight for each other. I think they're going to fight. I mean, fight literally, we, we had the most like, literally fighting fight. majors in the league. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mark like, Bor- like, there was yeah, a, uh, just yeah, a you funny go, thing go. for you, Ryan, real quick. There was a game where Mark Borowiecki got into three fights just in the first period. That's what I'm saying. Like, like this is not a team that just because they don't have their Vezina caliber goalie is just going to tuck it away and hide. Like, they're going to make it hard for Colorado, you know, and – yeah, you no. Know, Colorado is not like a soft team by any means, but compared to Nashville, they're kind of soft, right? So you know, Nashville's. I think there's gonna be one or two games where where you know Nashville's physicality just takes Colorado's kind of spirit out of it. You know, it's kind of yeah. like you know you, when you get popped in the mouth so hard, you get punched, you get hit a couple of times too much, and you're, you're kind of like, you know what? Let's just take the night off. You know, like they're they're obviously not gonna think that way, yeah. but like the energy level, I think for Colorado might not be up to compete um because that has been an issue with them you know in past playoff runs um so i think it's i, I think it's a, it's a five or game save i can't i can't confidently say either like five or six but i think it'll be one of those i think um, i think i think that nashville if they can get past colorado and if saros does come back after that i think they have a very good shot of getting past whoever they face in the second in my opinion i don't think but that all depends on saros but I will say this, Nashville, the first two games in Colorado, if they want to make it a competitive series, they have to take one of those games. Because everybody yeah. knows Bridgestone, yeah. especially in the playoffs, is going to be loud, is going to be insanely loud, and is going to be chanting all game. And it's going to make it very hard for the other team. We see that every year. So it all depends on how many games they can take in Colorado. Right. But I still have Colorado taking it in six. All right. Yeah. So um, next series, um, similar to, like I said, in Tampa, in Toronto, whoever wins this series, I think it's going to go to the Santa Cup finals. And between Minnesota and St. Louis, I got Minnesota in seven. And there's a couple – now, okay, so uh, let me say first, I know St. Louis is a good team. They got 920 goal scores. That's insane. That's absurd. That's, they, that's they got, definitely bad. They, got, they probably have the second best forward core behind Florida. Maybe third at worst. They're, they're such a stacked team. I do not trust this defense whatsoever. Krug, good offensive defenseman. Can you play a defensive game? I don't know. Pareko's a good shutdown guy. Who else do they have? Nick Letty isn't really that guy. Calorie Rosen, Bertuzzo. Like, they're not. They're, I just don't trust their defense. And, like, is Billy Hussle's run right now, like, sustainable? Like, is he really this elite of a goaltender, or is he just a one-hit lender like Bennington was in 2019? And if Hussle does falter, you got to put in Bennington, you're even more screwed because Bennington can't literally make a save at all. And I think with the way Minnesota plays, like, we talked when, when um, Michael Russo came on the pocket, I said, like, Minnesota plays playoff style hockey. They're banging and crash in the net. They have a lot of good they – they got a good depth, depth up front. They got an amazing decor. And, like, even when at the time when they had Talbot and Kaka, it was like, they have a good goaltending tandem. Now they add in Marc-Andre Fleury. He has championship DNA in his blood. Like, I, I think this Minnesota team is built for the playoffs. I think they're going to make it to the cup final. Spoiler alert. But, like, you know, I, I got Minnesota in seven. I think whoever is in that, whether it's Fleury or Talbot, will be able to handle the Blues. I think the defense on Minnesota is better. And even up front, I mean – Matt Boldy, rookie, he's been great. Marcus Foligno, career year. Frederick Rudrow, almost a 50-point guy. Ryan Hartman, 65 points. Zuccarello, Fiala, Kaprizov, that's been such a great line. I got I got Minnesota 7. I think a lot of people are under, kind of underrated in the wild a bit. 
and focusing a lot on the Blues forwards and goaltending, I think Minnesota is going to win this in seven goals for the Cup Finals. I have Minnesota in seven, uh, mainly because I trust in Huso a lot, but I don't think he can compete with Talbot or Flurry. Um, but if Huso gets hurt and they have to rely on Bennington, I I do not trust St. Louis to get even many games in. Okay, that's fair. Uh, I'm going to agree on that too. Uh, Minnesota in seven. I think that's a really good team there. And I'm going to agree with Shay on the fact that they're going to go into the Stanley Cup Finals in the West and they're facing off against, uh, like we said, um, Toronto or uh, Tampa. Tampa. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Minis- uh, I got Minnesota in seven too. So, I mean, first one, we're all consensus. Uh, <laughs> I think I think St. Louis is scoring. will keep them in this series. Uh, if Huso can, you know, continue to, you know, keep up his level of play, but like I said, if if, if Huso if Huso doesn't play up to like up to the caliber that he's been this season, it's gonna be a short series. Like yeah. like Huso's like the like Huso's gotta be the guy. You know, if, if he's not the guy, it, this might be a five game series. You know, like St. Louis might pour it on for one game, but man, like Huso's that X factor. Because yeah, like you said, I don't trust that Blues defense like at all. Yeah. Yep. So now we got Calgary and Dallas, and I mean, you know, Dallas is one of those teams that might surprise people. Like I, I mean, that line of Robertson, Hintz, Pavelski has just been insane. Haskins and Norris, you know, levels defensemen, and Jake Ottinger can play, but like Calgary, man, is just they're just built for playoff hockey, man. Like Daryl Sutter is should be coach of the year if he isn't. That's so stupid. Jacob Markstrom's just had an unbelievable year. Even defense, like Nikita Zadorov, Erica Branson, you know, two guys, you know, they're kind of memeish players, but like, you know, they're big, strong, physical guys. That's what you need in the playoffs. And, you know, and but I will say this, like, I think Calgary's depth is being very overrated a, a little bit. Like, Marjorie Pani, yes, he got 35 goals, but. I'm like 95% sure more than half of them came in the first half of the season, and he's been really kind of cold since. Um, but, I mean, that first line of Gaudreau, Kachuk, Lindholm, all those guys got 40 goals. They've been incredible. Um, but, you know, you know, guys like Michael Backlund would need to step up. Um, Milan Lucci, this is where he needs to thrive. He has one goal in his last 41 games. And, you know, like, like Calgary probably wins a series in five. That's what that's what, where my thinking is, right? But you know, Dallas could easily take over games, and they can play those shutdown type games. If they shut down Calgary's top line, and Calgary can't shut down the Robertson line, Dallas can win this series. But if we're just thinking logically, though, with the way Calgary's been playing all year, and their roster roster construction and their coach, I I got I got Calgary in five here. Uh, I'm, I, I, okay, so I think Dallas is a really good team. Uh, I I actually I'm pretty high on them. I do think they're gonna push this like hard, and I think they're gonna get, get this like six or seven games. But yeah, I don't know. Calgary's just they're that they're like if a team that's like not that great in the regular season, like they're good obviously. But even looking at them right now, you know that that team's like only built for the playoffs. Yeah, and um, I think that's that's gonna be the big thing here. I I think they're gonna. We put up a pretty good fight for, uh, with Minnesota uh, uh, once that happens, but or it doesn't happen, who knows? But uh, uh, but yeah, I think Dallas is gonna put up a decent fight. I, t- I think I have Calgary in six. I think Calgary can just bully them a bit more than they're used to this year. Yeah, I mean, Cal- Cal- Calgary in six for me as well. Um, it's uh. I mean, I was tempted to go five because, like, I'm I'm really just – I'm really just not high on Dallas. Like, I don't know what about – like, I just – outside of that first line, I just don't really like, like, anyone. Like, I like Andre. I like Heiskanen. I like that first line. <laughs> but outside of that, I, I really don't like their team. Um, I just don't think that it's built for playoff success. And, like, I just want to take a minute, like, can we just talk about – how perfect of a signing of, of a hiring that uh, Daryl Sutter was for Calgary. I know. Yeah. I, I clown on it when it happened. Like, he's been great. Yeah. Like, it like, was, it, like, yeah, you go. It was like 
I don't know. It was kind of like John Hines. Everyone was laughing at it, and then it just oh kind of worked. John Hines still sucks, man. I'm sorry. He does. I mean, he sucks, but he's been better than La Violette. I'll give you that. I just like, because like, the big thing with Calgary is that like they, they never really put like their game together, right? Like that's why they struggled so much in the North last year. Like they had all the players, all the names, all the talent. They had the goalies. They had the brand on defense. They had fours that could score. It just, they just couldn't get those guys to play hard uh, and play together and just come out with, with, with wins. Um, and if there's one thing, like you can criticize Daryl uh, Sutter all you want. If there's one thing he can do, he can make his players play for him, like play yeah. hard. Um, and that's all Calgary really needed to, to, to take that next step is just compete as a team. You know? you know, don't get caught in all the shenanigans. But if you do get caught in the shenanigans, everyone's got to have each other's back. You know, you got to play hard. You got to be willing to, to punch people in the mouth. And, you know, Calgary's a good team. Like, like I don't know if they're, they're not lined up to play Minnesota. Um, but I think that's a very likely uh, yeah. Western Conference final matchup. Yeah. All right, on to the last series. Edmonton, I LA. If we lose this, I might actually stop watching hockey forever. <laughs> yeah, you see? <laughs> uh, okay, but let's start at the beginning. If I'm going to say this right now. If the Oilers did not fire Dave Tippett, they wouldn't even be in the playoffs. I think we can agree on that. Yes. Oh, yeah. Probably they more went, than likely. You know, ever since Jay Woodruff took over, they've been twenty. They went. They've went twenty six nine and three. They're five v five goal differential. Under Tippett, they couldn't play five v five at all. But under Woodcroft, they have a plus thirty three thirty six five v five, and that's just insane to me. Like the this team has turned around so much, and it's been so drastic. It's a breath of fresh air seeing this team actually you know kind of play for each other actually have a solid structure in place and it's like it's 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 about time per se like and you know um you know i mean this has to be the year where the Oilers have to get out of that first round or or, or just break the losing drought in the playoffs because you're you're being gift wrapped a series here against la and they don't have drew dowdy and you know that that D core in LA is very inexperienced. There's a lot of good players I like on there. I love Jordan Spence. I love Sean Jersey. They're they're still young though, and you know whenever you got McDavid and Drysdale on your team, obviously you're gonna do some damage. But you know the one thing people are overlooking is that people are think like the reason why the Oilers lost last year is because they didn't have depth in their four core, right? I mean this year they they actually had the Zach Hyman, 27 goals, Nugent Hopkins, 50 points. Yamamoto, 20 goals. Evander Kane, 22 goals in 43 games. Pooh Yarvi um, continued to grow as a player. Warren Fogle had a great year. Ryan McLeod as a rookie had a good year. There's a lot of good pieces here in the forward core for Edmonton. And even with Edmonton's lackluster defense, you know, you still got Darren Owners. You still got Evan Bouchard who's rounding into his own. Even though he's a piece of crap human being and he's not a good defenseman, Duncan Keith, I think in some situations in the playoffs, will actually kind of help Edmonton. You know, a guy who's been there, you know, who's won three Stanley Cups. He's a Conn Smythe winner. Um, you know, and all Edmonton needs is Mike Smith to put be, – all Edmonton needs is Mike Smith to make a save. And ever since turning 40 years old, he's been 10-0. and 0. He, he just won NHL's second star of the month. And, and like, the Oilers, it seems like the Oilers got hot at the right time. And if you have a hot goal in the playoffs, anything could happen. And you also got, one, let's get two of the – two top – Three or four players in a league, the best in the league, obviously. And dry settle, depending where you where he is in your rankings, top four, top five, whatever. Like this is, I think Edmonton has a pretty easy path to the finals if, you know, if they get there. You know, they should be LA. I got LA. I got no. I got Edmonton in six games because I think Jonathan Quick will steal a game or two. But like this team is different. This isn't last year's Oilers, and. You know, you can finally see some progress in their game, and hopefully, they can continue to build this upon, a uh, continue to build this, um, play style into next season. So I got Edmonton in six here. Um, I don't think it'll be a sweeper in five games as people are saying. I just think that I think that's a bit unrealistic. But this this should be Edmonton series, and they sh- hopefully can make some noise. Okay. 
uh, I don't know if uh, Shay is going to make you a bit mad because I, I who this is going to be my big upset where I think Los Angeles, they're going to pull this out in seven. And it's mostly because that they, they are really, uh, they are a gritty team with a lot of heart. Yeah. Uh, I think that is very clear. Uh, they obviously don't have the same type of skill that Edmonton does that, uh, but, and I'm also, but I am putting a lot of this on the shoulders of Jonathan quick because uh, he's been good this season, and uh, he usually, uh, when he uh, he hits another uh, hits another gear in the playoffs, and is always going to be that emotional factor. Where this is uh, Dustin Brown's last year, and everyone that was like a veteran on that team, or even the new guys, they're going to want to play for him. So I think they're yeah. going to pull this out, and they're going to get it. To, they're going to get it in seven, and there's like no rationale for this other than um, they got heart. And I think that's important. God, Shay's, Shay, this is going to cause a huge divide between Oilers fans and Leafs fans because I'm with you, Q. I'm on the yes, same bus. Sir. LA and seven, baby. Oh, Shay's wow. going to hate me for this. All right, I, got, well. I, got, I, got, I, got, I got LA and seven. Um, for all those reasons um, above, but I just I want one good underdog narrative. Yeah. Right? You got LA. A team that you know I overlooked at the start of the season. A lot of people overlooked at the start of the season. I didn't. They're too young. They're too young. Drew Dowdy's washed. Jonathan Quick's washed. Dustin Brown's old. He should just retire. They got too many. They don't. They don't have enough glue guys. This team's not going to have enough talent to win enough games. You know, Vegas is definitely going to make the playoffs. It's not close, right? They come out there, bunch of young guys. Their blue line, pretty young guys like Matt Roy, Sean Walker. Not 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 even 27 years old yet. Um, they got a lot of young players, a lot of guys with heart. Sean Dursey is also really young. And like Q said, man, like how many years does Jonathan Quick have left? You know, how many, how many, how many years? Like we know this is Dustin Brown's last year, right? These are these are LA King legends that are going on probably one of their last playoff runs. And similar to how you know Shea had Sidney Crosby, you know pushing and playing everything he's got to try to drag Pittsburgh to, 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 to a good result in the playoffs. You know, I think this entire team is going to rally around the fact that this is Dustin Brown's last year. And like, like, I, I just, I just think that if there was a team that no one thought really had a chance this year that could make a run right now in these playoffs, it is LA. And it also helps that they're going to be playing an Edmonton team that yes, Shay is much improved an enemy yeah. team team that i really do think is really good and they're just one player away from being you know a top five stanley cup favorite actually but that goaltending is there that scares like, me like i know I was just, mike I was smith that. like mike smith man like like he can he can have he can be hot right now but one game where la fills the net and that mike smith can be gone just like that like in yep. one second he can be gone and I'm banking on it happening. And also, of course, you've got elite Stanley Cup final experience at yeah. center in Mr. Philippe Dano. Yes, sir. Um, and I, I shut you know down McDavid like nothing. That's what I'm before. saying. If there is one center in the NHL, right, in that Western Conference that can shut down Connor McDavid, it's Philip Dano. Because he 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 took Austin Matthews and Mitch Marr last year and put them in a straight jacket, right? So so my boy Philip Dano, LA is gonna go down to Edmonton. Punch them in the mouth. Philip Daniel is going to put McDavid and Dreisaitl in a straight jacket. They're going to win game one, four, three. Edmonton's probably going to come back and win the second game. They're going to go to LA, win both games at home behind a crowd that's rocking. Um, they're going to go back to Edmonton, probably lose that game, and then close out at home. Everyone's going to celebrate. Dustin Brown gets a hero's ovation as he ri rides off in the sunset and, and then loses probably the loses round. in the next round. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but, but I'm on the train, man. All right. LA and to close it off, I guess it's my thoughts on this series. All right. I disagree with you, Ryan, and I disagree with you, Quarrel. Um, this is not an upset series, but L.A. wins in six. What? It's not an upset. What? You want to know why? He's saying L.A. is just better. Yeah, no. You want to know why? Because when it, comes to the, when it comes to the playoffs, nothing in the regular season matters. And when it comes to the playoffs, well, Jonathan know. Quick and Jonathan Quick, we all know, Jonathan Quick can go from... A top 10 goalie, which you could maybe say he's been this year. He reaches a whole... 
He reaches a hold. Yeah. I wouldn't. He I wouldn't say he's been a top ten goalie this year, man. He doesn't just. I would say that. He doesn't just go from a third gear to a fourth gear. He goes from a third gear to a seventh gear in the playoffs, and we see it all the time. And the like Kings. Yeah. Yeah, the Kings have, uh, the pe- the forwards and the defensive people to shut down, uh, McDavid and Drysile. And yeah, the the Oilers are a lot better than they were last year, and they're they this is the best Oilers team I've seen in years. Yeah. But my thing is, is when it comes down to it, the thing that's going to win in the playoffs is goaltending, and Jonathan Quick and Mike Smith. It it speaks for itself. Both are both legends, just for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least one scored a goal. <laughs> yeah, and one also has a leaky five hole that you you throw on net. It goes to five hole. That, it's goal. That sounds yeah. That sounds wrong. Stop, um, okay. Rossi. All Stop. right, Rossi. You uh, didn't have to say that. Yeah. All right, let's see the fi- finals. I think uh, mine. Me and Shay have made ours clear. Yeah, Minnesota, Tampa. I got Tampa in five. Mm. Oh, you say Tampa in five. I'm saying Tampa in six. I got Minnesota, Tampa, Tampa in seven. Okay. Yeah, bro. This is not fair. I hate. I hate this. I hate this. I hate Tampa so much. Luck. Rossi, what's your final prediction? Um, I have, I have Colorado and Tampa, and I have Tampa and seven. <laughs> <laughs> you I hate this league. I hate this league so it's, much. It's awesome that every year that I'm in high school, Tampa Bay is gonna win the Stanley Cup. That's awesome. That's amazing. Uh, hey, this would be the first just, time they didn't do it in a shortened season. <laughs> Wow! I just look. You can't like. It's so hard to bet against the back-to-back defending champions, especially when they got better. They got better at the trade deadline. Wait, like how? I have okay, idea. Like y'all is, were already good, and then y'all went that, and got two really good third liners. The sad right. thing is, I think they're the third best team in the NHL. The first, the first is Florida, second is Toronto, and third is uh Tampa Bay. But I just don't think that Toronto matches up well against. I I just don't don't think Toronto or Florida matches L, up well against Tampa, and that that's and those are the only two teams that can beat them. I'm yeah. just saying, if Toronto was in the Pacific, man, Toronto would be in the Western Conference Finals by now. I don't like, know, I'm man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, after the Montreal stuff, maybe you guys lose yeah. the national. Well, the thing is, Montreal all, hey. all the way too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Montreal did just beat us. Like y'all, like everyone's meeting up. Like they beat Winnipeg and they beat Vegas too. Like like let's not let's not act like let's not act like Toronto was the only team that. That got you know that was just a hot team, just like how yeah. LA is gonna be a hot team this year. Shane. <laughs> oh yeah, watch out, right. watch out oh, for yeah, the Kings. Yeah. I'm already preparing for it, man. Like if we lose, I'm not gonna be affected. I'm just like, yeah, I, I saw this coming. If if all right, all right. Now everybody say actually what... no, we're losing game two because I'm gonna be there because <laughs> everybody 20... say that... I swear to God, no. In 2017, the Oilers had six home games, right? I went to three of them. They lost all of them. The other oh, three no. they fucking won. So I'm like, fuck. That's all tough. Right, 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 right. Shay, you gotta stop going to games. Everybody know, say right? their bias. Like, Predictions. Bias prediction. Oh, bias okay. prediction. So, okay. Oh. oh, yeah. Let's oh, go. Bias oh, prediction is the Leafs win this whole thing, which is like, it's honestly not even that. All right, my, my, my bias prediction is that Nashville still gets caught in one run. My bias prediction would be Edmonton, Carolina, Revenge of 06, and Edmonton wins it for Ben. My, my bias prediction is Nashville goes to seven games against Colorado. My bias prediction is the Leafs, they take it all the way, and Boston takes it all the way, and they and oh, no. finally beat Boston. <laughs> but, um, you know. My my bias prediction is Boston moves to the Western Conference, <laughs> dropping to the NH- NHL Finals, and loses to Boston in seven. Uh, oh. Patrice Bergeron scores the game winner in overtime on James Reimer, who magically signs a 10-day contract to play game seven for us. Um, and I cry. Nah, if, if we're being for real... Um, we pro- I, I, I want us to play Carolina uh, at some point, like really badly. Um, I love to play Freddie, but then like, okay. like I think my ideal one would be if somehow I don't know if it would line up. No, it can't. But like, if Carolina were to face us in the Eastern Conference Finals, which is basically a revenge matchup um, from the last time we made it that far. Uh, I think it was what oh six. I think it was oh yep. six, right? Um, and we beat them, 06? and we, I think it was was it was not oh six when we when we played Carolina in the in the Eastern Conference Finals. I thought it was 04. Um, 04, yeah, 04. My bad, my this bad. 04. Um, we beat them, and then we play. Um, uh, and then we play. What do you call it? I actually want. Us, I, I I want us to play either Edmonton or or or, or uh, Calgary because I want I want it to be an all Canadian finals. Yeah, but yes. Sweep us. 
Okay. We, 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 don't, match up, we don't match up no, no. well against Toronto at all. That's perfect. This is because <laughs> then no one can say we didn't earn it because we beat the best team in the the back to back defending champs in Tampa in the first round. We beat the best team in the Metro in Carolina. And we probably just... have to beat Florida in the second round. Like we we had we fought our battle. Like like okay, even no. if we sweep Edmonton, everyone says it's a cupcake finals matchup. I don't care. We earned it the first three rounds. We played three of the top right, five right, teams right, in right. the NHL. Yeah, if the Leafs if the Leafs can win this first round, it's gonna be a battle to the end. But they're gonna it's gonna be like. This, They're like Gronks, bro. This is how the oh. the this is how this is how this could break down to break Shea's spirit and just and break. Oh, why? I know, Calgary, why? Uh, Edmonton I it, goes yeah. no no. Edmonton goes to round two. We're gonna lose to Calgary. I said no, that. No, Edmonton goes to round two and sweeps Calgary. Edmonton goes what? to the conference finals. Somehow Nashville still makes it there. Big save, Davis. <laughs> Shuts them out <laughs> all four games. <laughs> Oof. All four no, games, no, big save Dave. And after no, every game, he's well, no, no, that wouldn't break my spirit because that means big save Dave fucking beat Colorado. So I wouldn't be surprised if we lost. No, no, no. no. This is this is what happens, uh, Rossi. So Nashville wins round one with uh, with with that entire team just backpacking Dave Riddich, right? right, right Soros right. comes back for round two. Soros wins them round two. They get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Star Soros um starts the first three games. Edmonton. Barrages him. He gets hurt in game seven. three. David Ridge comes in to back him up for the last four games <laughs> of the series. <laughs> and, and, and then they reverse up. sweep. They reverse sweep. As in, that would break Shays. And and, and, no, no, no. and game seven in Edmonton, Shays right behind the goal that Riddick, oh. that Riddick and Riddick turns to Shay, looks at him, stick flips. And and takes off his masks and wink it and winks at him. <laughs> oh no! Okay, no. And, I, I don't and do the game is it's gonna be an overtime game winning goal. And what's gonna happen is Matt Duchesne is gonna shoot. No, Matt Benning is gonna. Yeah, it's gonna be, be Matt Benning. Yeah, it has, it has to be an Oiler the, legend, man. It has to be an Oiler. He's gonna no, fling no, no, no. it from the point, and then Tyson Berry is gonna bounce off of Mike Smith's pad. He's gonna make the save. Tyson Berry is gonna forget that he plays for Edmonton for a second, or accidentally hit it off the blade of his stick and into the net. No, no, no. And then it, it's um, gonna be even he, worse because it's gonna be game seven overtime. No, screw it. It's gonna be double overtime. I feel like we're getting off topic. We've gotta end this podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me. Let me, let me. It's gonna be Riddick. He's gonna shoot it towards Mike Smith. Mike Smith is gonna be like, Ugh! and it's just gonna go right past Mike Smith. <laughs> no, it's a five hole. It's gonna go through the five hole. Go through the five hole. Yeah. yeah. And then and then and then they, and then Riddick is gonna be like, you're not the only goalie who can score a goal. And then he's gonna do the the stick flip. It's gonna yeah, be great. I, I can already foresee it. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> what would be even better is if Riddick goes to the the Cup Finals and absolutely just stinks it up and plays like terrible. <laughs> yeah. I know. Like, like God damn, the Oilers just suck. I guess. <laughs> All right, let's stop this. Let's stop this. I'm sorry, Shay. Okay, no. Two no. days, guys. Two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stanley Cup playoffs. Oh yeah, and by the way, um, we're gonna be doing the playoff recaps as well. I know a lot of people like that when it happens. So those were those are gonna be back. Don't you worry. Uh, yeah. Sure. We also will be All doing right. our awards predictions and our shay and i will do a season prediction recap hot take reviews too we got a lot hot of stuff review, yeah we got a lot of stuff um, to do yeah me, me and q might also try to see if we can live stream yeah. well q probably won't for game one or two but we're gonna try to see if we can live stream some of the games so you can you can hear me cry live it's gonna be like yeah, bro. Right after the game I'm just gonna. Um, I'm gonna be like a bum penetrated by the exam, and then like I see the score after, and I'm gonna be even worse, man. <laughs> you're gonna join the call. You're gonna be like Ryan, why? Like, <laughs> so why over, do I exist bro. just to suffer? I mean, it's over, bro. I'm literally All just right. gonna turn on every single game of this playoffs for Nashville, and I'm just gonna start crying. All right, that's Honestly. it. That's it for today's episode. We'll see, see you in two days, guys. It's gonna yeah, be a good playoffs. Yes, yep. sir. All right. Thank you.